thing that we need to understand when it comes to the use of power is the ultimate. We've agreed that is to influence. You can look at the influencing strategies. What are the things that we use to influence? We get them from the power which we have discussed. We can group them into two. We have upward and we have downward. What do we mean by downward influencing ta tactics or strategies? What it means is that it is the leaders, people who are at the top, who want those below to do things for them. And so the behavior that is being altered is the behavior of the subordinates. And so those at the top want those down, yourself, you want your subordinates to do certain things, and you are using the strategy to influence them. And there are several of them. In the same way, sometimes those at the bottom who also want to influence the behavior of those at the top. But now we're talking about the downward strategies, downward influencing strategy. It has been established that in most cases, superiors and the people at the top tend to influence those below than those below trying to influence those at the top. And they do so for what reason? Sometimes personal goals. Personal. That has nothing to do with the organization. Because they are at the top, they use influencing tactics to achieve that. Sometimes, as I said, self-interest. Sometimes as a way of social control, and sometimes as a way of positively trying to change behavior. At the family level, that is what our parents do to ensure social control, that you live according to the standards of society. But at the organizational level also, we do it. It's very important, social control. The successful use of these tactics tend to be able to reduce resistance. It's very important. In several instances, not the majority do, subordinates have resisted a particular strategy. And so the fact that we have so many strategies doesn't mean that we can use them. Anymore. And that is the difference between effective leader and ineffective leader. An effective leader will scan, analyze, calculate, and employ the most appropriate strategy. And once you use the most appropriate strategy, you are less likely to face resistance. Otherwise, they will resist because people naturally wouldn't want to do things different from the way they are used to doing them. And so these are the downward influencing tactics. What it means is that superiors trying to change the behavior and influence the uh, behavior of subordinates, these are some of the ways by which they do that. Assertiveness, very important. When we say they assert themselves, they do so many things, including nagging. They will nag and nag and nag, and you give up and say that, let me go and do it. Order, they give order, they will set deadline. By Friday, you should have finished this. Verbal confrontation, you say all kinds of things, abuse. So that, yes, because you, what are you doing? What did I ask you to do? Come on, hurry up and do it. And then the person will go and do it. So to influence them, this is one of the, and it is ethical, it is proper if it is used at the right time to use assertiveness. Integration, very important. Being very polite, friendly, flatter them, use the nice ways, and the person will do it without realizing that they are doing it. And that is also done. Logic, reasoning, planning, compromise is also an important uh, strategy. Appeal to values, beliefs, aspiration. So you quote, for instance, if you're a Christian, you quote the Bible. That the Bible says we should respect the, our, our bosses in the office. Or you quote the Quran, and you quote something. Or you rely on your tradition. You rely on your, on your custom. You rely on something that people are so emotionally attached, and you get your... Uh, your, 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 your results. And then, 
pressure, you know, pressure, threat, persistence, and it's very close to the assert assertiveness. Reminders to influence performance, please ask, um, yes, we can, we can use it in our day-to-day, in our -day. please, it's two days more, right? And so be reminded that we need to do this, we need to do this, it's, it's, it's a more of integrative uh, approach and this, I find it di very difficult to talk about it, but it works. Manipulation and being dishonest. These are, these are, I don't want to go into ethics, but people will question it that they are not, um, they are not ethical, yes. But from the family level, you know, the child won't agree for you to leave. So what do you tell the child? Something that will make the child, so sometimes you tell the child that, wait, go and wear your shoe, I'm waiting for you. Only for the child to enter the room and then you run away. In the same way, when we go to the office, there are so many ways by which we, we need to get the results. If you don't get the results, this is what is going to happen. So we find something and tell them. And that they are able to perform, and when the time comes, you find another story. Manipulation and control someone to get what you want. Manipulation. Sometimes you hide the motive. And it's... it's you are doing something, but because of the intention and because of the person's ignorance, you are taking advantage of the person. Very good. You're taking undue advantage of the person. And so the, these last two are not too it's debatable. But we are talking about reality. What happens at the organizational level if they are demonstrating, they are revolting, they are threatening to destroy the property of the organization, and because they are demanding payment, what do you do? If they say that we will not until you pay by tomorrow, why won't you say, please, agree, tomorrow go and come for the money. And as soon as they leave, you call the security people to come and protect the property. When you know that, because you can't raise the money, you can't pay. And so it is, I'm not recommending it, but it is one of the uh, uh, ways by which top management or leaders get subordinates to comply with order and with whatever they want to do. We also have the opposite. As I mentioned earlier on, it is not only those at the top who need those down there to do things for them. Those who are below also want to get things from the leaders. And so we may be leaders, but we are in the middle. How do we get things from the top? We also have several strategies, but because of the degree, the level of authority that we have, sometimes the approach from the bottom tends to be more radical. It tends to be more uh, unconventional. Yes, unconventional. It tends to be seen in more of a negative uh, light because you don't have much authority, and you want to influence the one who has so much authority to do things uh, your way. And so we're talking about the process in an organization by which participants attempt to gain compliance from those at higher levels in the former organization structure. You can imagine this in Africa. You are bottom there, you want the people at the top to change their behavior, to leave their decisions, to leave their strategies, and follow yours. When we say that, even from our homes, the elder is always right. And then you go to the office and we still have this. But the reality is that the people down there, or those of us in the middle, must also get management to comply, to also do certain things in our favor. Otherwise, we cannot achieve our objective. And so, there are so many of them, but I think we're going to talk about five or so of them today. One more formal appeal. We can send delegation, we can write, we can do, just to appeal to the leaders that, please, these are the reasons and these are the things that we need. That is one of the strategies. In most cases, some don't work and it's as if 
they are, they, are, they, are, they, they are in levels, but they are not. Then, sometimes you see coalition. Coalition. So, other organizations, or it could be one organization, it is one unit that is looking for it, and then the others will join. I remember very well that in my, in my, in my school, the business school, there was a decision to transfer the entire bursary staff, that is the accounts office, the staff, the accountant and the assistants, to transfer them from the school and bring a new a group there. And within this, those who are not working in the bursary or the other department, the staff, administrative support staff, had met, they had built a strong coalition and they sent the delegation to the management that please we have become so used to them and that even if they will go it has to take a different form it there has to be a time so that the transition could be managed properly and that was accepted and so they asked i speak now they are still around even though they might be transferred but then at least they've stayed longer than they were uh, uh, supposed to based on that policy Sometimes, when these, the top two fail, those down there can decide to withdraw service. And it's legal, which is very common in Africa. If you don't increase their salary, we are not teaching again. And then, you withdraw. Medical doctors say, because of ABC, if it is not done, we are not going to the hospitals. We are not going to the consulting room. And then people are dying, and so what happens? There is panic, there is pressure, and whatever they need is provided for them to go back uh, to work. So withdrawing services is one of the effective upward influence strategies when it comes to influencing others or leading others. Blocking decisions. And sometimes they are involved in the decision making. Even though they are not at that level, the people down there are made to be part, and by so doing, they are able to influence management. They contribute, at least when there is time uh, for, when a time comes for them to vote, they also have votes. And so these are some of the things by which people get influenced. And it is so important for us to understand how do we influence people, especially those down there, as well as those up there. And what are the determinants? How do you do it? What are the factors that should be considered in doing this? Leadership style is very important. The leadership style determines whether a particular approach will be used or not. For instance, if a person is autocratic leader, no matter what, this person is more likely to use coercive or punitive. It's very important. Span of control. When you talk about span of control, we are talking about how many people are you supervising or managing, or how many people are under your unit is also very important. Role ambiguity or role clarity, defining it, specifics. What is it that is supposed to be done? If it is clearly defined that A must do this, B must do that, C must do that, D must do that, it becomes very easy for you to decide. If the role is so ambiguous, it's very difficult for you to use reward. Who are you going to reward? It's all of us are doing it. It's together. And so what is the organizational structure like? Where do you sit? You, the one who is using if you are in the middle, there are certain strategies that you can't use on the person down there. If the organization structure says that if someone does anything wrong, or if you want to, anybody to do anything, report to your boss for approval. It is different from the one that you are so independent, you can take action there and then. It's very important. What about local and organizational culture? What is the belief system in that community? What is it? If it is the 
more or less the relational orientation. People prefer friendliness. It is very difficult for you to use certain strategies because, in fact, it happened that across Africa, in most cases, we know clearly that what we are doing is hurting organizational objective. We prefer sacrificing the task to maintain the social relation. And when it happens that way, then you have to be very careful on the strategy that you use in trying to. And so these are factors that they are very important and they determine, they influence us. They influence us. So these are traits, specific character traits that people who are able to lead others by influencing them must have. One, articulate. If you want to influence people, you must be able to put your message across. There are some people that they won't give you anything. They sit you down. By the time you leave the place, whatever ideas that you took there will have vanished. And that is what we are talking about. Sensitive. There are people that you can get along when they see that you are empathic. They tell you all the stories and you tell them, I appreciate. Oh, sorry. Oh, this. Oh. And then your tone and everything, and they see that, you know, once they see this, the trust is there. You ask them, and sometimes they can tell you, I'm doing this just because of you. And that is it. Competent. Are you on top of it? Whatever strategy you want to use. How much expert power do you have? Popular? Or are you unpopular among the subordinates or the employees? Socially, I'm talking about, we discussed that, our social relations, our ability to communicate, extroverts, ambitious, aggressiveness, and self-confidence. There are some of them that you cannot use. If you don't have so much self-confidence, if you are not aggressive, how can you block? We all discussed here and said, one of the strategies is to block decision. If you don't have that confidence, if you don't have certain things, you can't withdraw your service. And so it is very important for us to understand that even though all these are traits, of course, you can't find one person who possesses all these. But the important thing is that these are required. They are very important for us to have, and this will help us to be able to get others along. Situation, again, determines which one should be used or which one is useful when it comes to the trade. Sometimes the competency will help. In other situations, it is the self-confidence that will help. Aggressiveness will help if you need to block, and sometimes if you need to talk to people politely, in a more humble, you know, more appealing, just to win their, uh, 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 their conscience is very important. Mm -hmm.